This is the giant mural in the city of Cusco, Peru, and uh, it's one of the most detailed murals that you will actually ever see in the country of Peru. If you ever walked in Avenida del Sol in the city of Cusco, there's no way you can miss it or walk past it without stopping by at least for a few seconds to take a look at this because it's so well done. It shows the entire history of Peru. It actually starts from the beginning of the civilization by Incas all the way up to the independence of Peru. The mural was done by Juan Bravo in 1992. He's a really well-known artist in Peru. Let's go deeper into this mural so we can understand what are the things that are shown in this painting. Let's start from left to right. When you look at the top left, what you see is birth of the Inca people. You see a shady face figure, which I believe is God Viracocha. And you see two people standing on the right side, a man with a shaft and a woman standing next to him. These are um, Manco Capac and Mama Oclo, who were sent by God Viracocha to create the Inca civilization. History goes like this. They both were given a uh, golden staff and uh, they had to uh, start a civilization where the staff sank into the ground firmly. Of course, Cusco was the place where the Inca civilization actually began. Right below the figures of Manco Capac and Mama Oclo, you see plenty of men working to create a great civilization. On the left you see people making fires, a man actually making medicine or grinding some sort of you know a potion. You also see a lot of people constructing. You see people making corn which was fundamental to the creation of the Inca civilization. Right next to where a man is holding corn and he's also pointing to the Inca flag which is the color of the rainbow. Also, right below the shining moon, you can actually see the six huge blocks of stones found in Oyante Tambo. To the right of Oyante Tambo, after a small hut, uh, the mountain of Machu Picchu. Below, you can see people fighting. Now, these are internal battles fought between, I don't know, different clans of people in order to have the dominance of the Incas. I mean, the Incas came out on top, of course, until they met the Spanish conquistadors. And you can see men pulling a giant piece of rock wrapped in a rope going towards Oyante Tambo. One more thing uh, the mural actually shows, if you see way up top, on the far right, a suspension bridge and llamas crossing the suspension bridge. Well, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I think the Incas were the first ones to create a suspension bridge. Here you can see an uh, Inca woman weaving. Weaving is considered one of the most important work of Incas. Now, it's almost even considered a ritual that every Inca woman must weave. On the right, you see a statue of the Puma, which is the sacred god of the Incas. Remember, Cusco was the capital of the entire Inca Empire from ever since the beginning of the Inca civilization all the way up to 1532. People believe that Cusco itself is planned in the shape of a puma. In the top center where you see the big golden circle, that is the coat of arms of Cusco. Right below the coat of arms or the shield of Cusco, you see a man pointing his finger towards the left. This man is Pachacutec. He is one of the best rulers of the Inca civilization. His rule lasted from 1438 to 1471 AD. In the Inca Chronicles, it actually says that Pachacutec played the key role in developing the Inca Empire to what you can even see now. He was instrumental in creating the biggest stone structures and revitalizing the Inca Empire.
to the right, the people celebrating the Sun Festival or the Inti Raimi. The Inti Raimi is still in practice. You can also see a woman who has a bowl of coca leaves. Below you can see two golden statues. On the left you see a golden mummy of the Inca. And then you also see another golden llama. It was customary for the Incas to worship their ancestors. Here is where the Spanish conquest begins. The painting is excellent because it shows the first Inca interpretation of the Spaniards. They must have initially thought that these creatures are half human and half beast because they did not have horses and they did not see people well armored and execute such brutality. Just below this you can also see a Spaniard raping Inca woman. You can see a Spaniard stealing the golden llama. You can also see another man stealing a golden pot. To the Incas the gold was just a decorative element. The gold did not have any monetary value. But for the Spaniards that meant the world to them. That meant all the wealth. So next you can see the raging battle between the Incas and the Spaniards. You can see at the top the Incas are holding their flag. You also see another Spanish soldier bringing his flag and trying to hold it up against the Inca flag. The fort that is shown is Saxe Huaman. The biggest battle happened here. A uh, Spanish priest teaching a local Quechua person how to paint. The painting is shown as the Spanish style which is markedly different from uh, the Inca painting. In this picture, I believe they're showing the conversion of the Inca people to Christianity and to change those people to live the Spanish lifestyle. You can see how the local people are taught different types of Spanish ways of doing things. You can see chiseling, carving, carpenting, and painting in Spanish style. On the top, you can see torture device called a rack where a person is going to be tied with this arms to one end and the legs to the other. They are going to rotate wheels on both sides to tear them apart into two pieces. Thing of interest here is that the person who is actually doing this is a Quechua or an Inca person and the person who is ordering him to do is a person who is in a hood reading some kind of a scripture or a scroll. Right behind this man you're also going to see a naked woman tied upside down. You can see other forms of torture for example right next to the rack you can see a person who's being tied up to a pole being um, flagellated by a local person and you can see how the local person is completely dressed up like a normal Spanish conquistador or a normal Spanish person. He's wearing a hat, he's wearing a belt and at this point I believe you had two sections of Inca people. Some of them have completely adopted the Spanish way of life. They were used as mercenaries against the people who were still uh, rebelling against the Spaniards. Below you can also see the Inca people being hung. Here you can see Tupac Amaru II uh, being quartered for his rebellion. This is not Tupac Amaru I but this is actually Tupac Amaru II who died on uh, May 18, 1781 for a huge uprising against the Spanish in Peru. He is still considered one of the most prominent rebellious leaders and he's actually considered like the father independence movement in Peru. Tupac Amaru II's death was uh, really brutal. His tongue was cut off and he had to watch the killing of all his loved ones before they tied his arms and legs to horses on four different sides. Horses ran in four different directions tearing him apart and his head was cut off it was placed in Cusco in a public place for three days for people to witness 
all his extremities and other body parts were cut off and they were thrown all over Cusco as a lesson for the, for the people to understand what would happen if they ever rebelled against the Spanish crown. Tupac Amaru II has had a great influence on many, many different things. For example, the rapper Tupac Amaru took his name in the movie Brave Heart, where Mel Gibson screams freedom as the last word. It's actually taken from uh, Tupac Amaru's life. It said that that was his last word, and people actually believed that he was some kind of a god who would return uh, to ensure the freedom of the Incas. This is the far right portion of the mural. On the top you can see a man riding and you can also see uh, some instrument with gears on them and in the bottom two men fleecing a sheep probably trying to show that they were getting developed in the textile industry and then kids playing a couple of families looking towards the sunrise showing a bright future of Peru. The bottom right you see the rice of an Inca man. I'm not sure who this man is, but I'm thinking it's the spirit of Tupac Amaru too. You know, freedom from all oppression and then looking forward to a bright future. I hope you guys enjoyed this explanation and I hope I was as accurate as possible because there's not much around, especially on the internet. I hope it was of some value to you understanding the history of Peru and uh, if you did like it, you know, please click on the like button and uh, subscribe to my channel or leave a comment. If I said something wrong, please don't hesitate to point that out, okay? Well, talk to you soon.